I thought you were talking about like the World War II tops and the classic Tommy gun that you would. At least that's what I think of when I hear the word Thompson. Referring to guns. I'm not seeing the, oh, I'm seeing what you're seeing. You want to put up who's there? Just the two of us right now. Oh, Bonnie's there. my show how come I can't show who's on or who the people are who are there oh because nobody has video I see someone's enjoying the text down there on the pews. Someone's enjoying the text on the pews. Uh, lots of toys, yes. Oh, I got some too. Yeah? What kind of toys? Wait, somebody can hear me. Hello? Four? Four. Four. Wow. But only two are here. Okay. Hello?
I feel the need to lay off sweets. Okay. I really do. Well, you know, we've got some nice munchies left out there. The red pepper and a couple of eggs and we do hot dogs and mm -hmm, corn and stuff. If I just lay off junk to lunch, I'll do good. Okay. And I can do that. There's church. Oh, it's live. Is that mm -hmm. live? Uh huh. How neat. I don't see anybody mm -hmm. there yet. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, there's one person. Two. Oh. There's some, oh, no, that's the corner of the chair. One person. There's, I think that's Peggy, isn't it? Looks like Peggy. Looks like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're not here. People are having to wear masks and they're taking their temperature before they come in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit like Tony. I think that's John Meyer. Mm -hmm. What is Kane, yeah? And that's Alice. That's, I call calls with ground forms and that's Lois. Yeah. Matt and Lori. Yes. Oh yeah. After Spanky disappeared from their Florida backyard. Virginia got a call. You want me to run down there and I'll wave to you? <laughs> no. no. Good morning, Gail and Jack. Good morning, Mary Beth. How you doing? Good, now that it's cooler. Oh, I've got windows open. Did I do too. Feel good? You know, isn't that nice? Oh, I couldn't stand. I just, the minute I got up, I checked outside and I started opening all the windows. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Lisa. Oh, look at Lisa Ugno sitting out in the woods. <laughs> you might think so, but... <laughs> but no. That's your fancy-dancy way of putting stuff behind you. I have no idea how you do that. It's my fancy-dancy way of not showing you my house. <laughs> well... <laughs> Listen, Lisa, none of us have dusted or anything. For I know. Time, so. I found a cobweb on the lamp in the bedroom, and I went, oh, my God. <laughs> You just learned to live with it. I did. I said, good night. Boom, turn the light off. How about the new accessories at the ends of the pews? Yeah, yeah what the heck is that all about? I it can't is, see. What is it? I can't tell. It's it's garbage cans, and there's little, there's little signs hanging on the end. Of sit in this pew or something? Yeah. Oh, saying where you should sit and where you shouldn't sit? Well, it looks like waste cans. They are it waste is. Cans. It's waste baskets. Yeah. I didn't know we had that many at the church. Well, they must have bought some more. Yeah. Personally, I like the candle holders better. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can get red and green waste baskets for yeah. Christmas. <laughs> we'll have to put red and green linings in at Christmas. <laughs> I doubt we'll all be there. All right. Yeah. Morning, okay, Alan. I Good hope morning. we are. How are you Hi, guys Alan. this morning? Yeah. Lisa Berger, can you hear us? How's everything in Santa Fe? We can hear you, but it's very echoey. Thank you. Oh my God, he must be in a cave. It's super, <laughs> Tony, it's super, super echoey. Yeah. I could not sit there for an hour and a half with a mask on. I'm sorry. I'm done with those days. <laughs> I can wear, my mask doesn't bother me. I can wear it for. Catholic kids. 
we've already made progress. Last week we were trying to uh, to broadcast using all the mics for you in here. How is everyone today? How is how 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 are Bonnie and Glenn? Uh, and Sharon and Alex. We're, good. we're fine, thank you. <laughs> and now we, uh, we don't need the laptop. We have the voice mic going right into the Zoom, so people at home are able to hear uh, the, uh, the, the communicating happening the same way as, as you can hear it and hear through our system lights. We obviously have some adjusting to do on them because I'm still hearing some feedback on some of these mics that we normally don't pick up. Uh, but we're perfecting the technology and as we do, uh, we're just thrilled to be able to worship in person as we're able to. Yes. Uh, and uh, have to do so uh, carefully and safely. So, welcome. We invite you first to uh, just settle and set up this Tony's laptop screen. So, it'll offer us, and then we'll I certainly didn't do that. <laughs> I'll invite you to stand, and we will, we will sing our first opening song. Yeah. Yeah. That's good, because I don't know what to do.
Hello, where are the readings? Hello. I need the service. I need the readings, people. I don't have the readings. I can't see it. She doesn't have the reading. She needs the reading. I need the Zoom. <clears throat> A reading from the book of Genesis. These are the descendants of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel the Aramean of Badam Aran, sister of Laban the Armenian. Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord granted his prayer, and his wife Rebekah conceived. The children struggled together within her, and she said, If it is to be this way, why do I live? So she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples born of you shall be divided. The one shall be stronger than the other. The elder shall serve the younger. When her time to give birth was at hand, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red, all his body like a hairy mantle. 
So they named him Esau. Afterward, his brother came out with his hand gripping Esau's heel. So he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. When the boys grew up, Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man living in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he was fond of game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was cooking a stew, Esau came in from the field and he was famished. Esau said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stuff for I am famished. Therefore, he was called Edom. Jacob said, first, sell me your birthright. Esau said, I am about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll say together this psalm responsively, Psalm 119. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I sworn you and determined to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply... I am deeply troubled. Preserve my life, O God, according to your word. Accept, O God, the willing tribute of my lips and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me, but I have not stayed straight away from your commandments. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are the joy of my heart. Next page, guys. A reading from the letter to the Romans. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Here's then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who bears, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Introduced to the words, they who have ears to hear the message, they who have ears, then let them hear, they who would learn the way of wisdom, let them hear God's word. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, please be seated. preparation for this uh, this reading today uh, it really resonated with some deep memories some memories that are uh, actually over 40 years old uh, and that is that uh, I remember the first time I heard this passage read and I remember having heard it read and that was the occasion I was just a really minute 19 year old and uh, just finished my first year of college. And, uh, and I had just been in the month of uh, uh, April, realized that this God that I was worshiping in Jesus was real, that this God See, growing up a good Catholic boy, I mean, I was in a culture where uh, my experience of God was was religious. It was I went to church every week, and uh, being a, an altar boy in the late '60s, early '70s, uh, the real religious highlights were Easter and Christmas because we we got to put on special uh, eye cast really cool red velvety material and gold and frilly stuff on it. Just 
made you feel really special and it was pretty and of course we ran into nuts all around the church. That was my experience of God was just through that and dutifully showing up for confession and uh, speaking my guilty conscience on a regular basis and making sure that I was always guilty. Uh, that was what it meant to know God. But I had this awakening, this 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 awareness of God as more than just a, a philosophical exercise in metaphysics. I knew God was real. And the shape thing and why I remember this reading is, is that as I read this reading and I thought of, you know, here the parable of the seed, you know, that this it falls on the hard path. Uh, it's just gonna die because there's no way for roots to take any and in the rocks, and then in the thorns, and then finally there was the wheat that the, were the seeds that uh, grew on in the fields where they produced 160, 30 fold. And all I remember, which I'm certain any person with any kind of textbook approaching any kind of a reading would remember, is I wanted to be one of those followers, those disciples who didn't have a short-lived religious moment. It wasn't just a flash in the pan. I wanted something that would endure and bear much fruit. I can tell you at 19 years old, I was clueless about what I was asking for, except that I wasn't clueless about the sense of wanting the durability of a real thing that would, that would endure with me through a lifetime. That's what I wanted. When I read this in that traditional lesson, that's really part of what Jesus is trying to teach the people is this awareness of the, the fact that Jesus is the one that's sowing the seeds. And the question for us to answer is what kind of soil are we going to be? And clearly that any of us would know that we would all probably share soil of me would be for those divinely sown seeds. But I want us to think of this differently than the way that I grew up with it, the way that I reflected on it for 62 years. I want you to hear it in a different lens today. I want us to think about this not from the anthropological standpoint, that it's not about our human standpoint of our human condition. I want to invite us to think about this theologically in terms of what it says about God, the nature of God. Because that, I think, is the real clue and indication for us. If we understand this as something about the nature of God, then what God is showing us that God is so abundant in the scattering of the seeds everywhere. God isn't just sitting there holding on and dropping a few here in the rich soil. God's abundance of seed sowing and love is something God is casting joyfully, freely, abundantly everywhere. Without judgment, without withholding. And if we understand that nature, then the invitation for us is to wonder if we can do likewise with the seeds that God gives us. Do we live our lives with so much freedom that we're able to cast out of our seeds of hope and things broadly, knowing of course that some place the ground is, is going to be hard and they may not make it. But we're giving out of our sense of abundance and generosity, not judgment and limited possibility. God's saying it's all redeemable. It's all possible. I'll cast my seeds everywhere. And that invites us to think about if there's something for us to learn about the nature of God that God is inviting us to do. It is to have the freedom of being able to cast our seeds of hope, our opponents in life,
Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. <clears throat> Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray especially for those who have entrusted their needs to our intercessions on their behalf. Alana. Alan and Sharon. Anna Mary. Barbara. Bonnie and Rod. Brent. Brian and Mary Ann. Carolyn. Carol and Ken. Catherine. Chris and Lisa. Dave. Debbie. Diane. Eleanor. Elaine. Gavin. Greg. Heidi and Mark. Holly. Hugh. Irma and Susie. Jackson. James. Jerry. John and Virginia. Jonah and Milo. Jordan. Joseph. Judy. June. Karen. Kelly. Ken. Luana. Lauren. Lenora. Marcia. Mark. Meg. Megan. Mike. Nancy. Pat. Ron. Roz and Arnold. Samantha. Sean. Sheldon. Sue. Sydney. Taylor. The Reverend Trila. Wolfgang. Yuri and Tatiana. We pray for all those who have died, especially Pepper, and all the victims of the coronavirus and other disease and illness. Almighty God, we entrust all people to your never failing care and love. For this life and the life to come, knowing that you are doing for them better things than we can desire or pray for. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us remember those who are celebrating your birthday today or in the coming week. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants, Alexis Melton, Lori Hackett, and Abigail Brandenburg, and all who celebrate the beginning of another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace, and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray as well for those who are celebrating an anniversary today or in the coming week. 
O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send your blessing upon all couples celebrating anniversaries this week and grant them your grace that their lives together may be a witness to your love and forgiveness, and that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Living God, may they not fail you. O Christ, the master carpenter, who at the last to the wood and nails purchased our whole salvation, wield well your tools in the workshop of your world, so that we who come rough hewn to your bench may here be fastened, fashioned to a truer beauty of your hand. We ask this for your own name's sake. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Mm -hmm. Saying together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life.
Here's uh, Waddell. few people showed up. Mm -hmm. Is it over? We couldn't hear or see anything from after the anniversary prayer. Same here. <coughs> I texted. Did I hear what? It could Gail, could you hear the sermon? Not a word. Right. No. I think Not I got a word. So. So, yeah. You know, we've got to get somebody in there to get this thing working right. <laughs> well, Lois Kari has someone that can do it. I could not hear a thing. No, no, we couldn't either, Arnold. We couldn't nope. either. Didn't know when to read. No, nope. didn't know. And, and we couldn't even. We didn't even have it up on the screen so that we could read it ourselves. No. Well, yeah. Nope. She, Karen is out of town. Oh. And yeah, Karen's, Karen and Mike are in Sagatuck for their anniversary. Oh, great. And, uh, she got lots of distress calls for the 8 o'clock. And uh, <laughs> so she Zoomed in. She got everybody set up because we didn't even have a Zoom link. So she got that out from Sagatuck. And that's how mm -hmm. I found out she was there on her anniversary. Oh, when is well, when she just coming? can't go away anymore? Oh, really? <laughs> well, no, but we just have to have someone else that knows what to do. And I know that I talked to Lois a couple of weeks ago, and she definitely has somebody that um, knows how to do this and link it all up. But Chris wanted to stick with Landon, so we're stuck, I guess. Well, somebody well, needs to tell Chris that it didn't work. What's that? Somebody needs to tell Chris that it didn't work. Kept yeah. asking. Yeah. So that we well, the microphones are not picking. They didn't pick up his sermon. I mean, can, we could hear Beth, once in a while. We now? catch a word. Yeah, yeah, Tony, we can hear you, Tony. Yeah, now we can hear you, Tony. We couldn't hear you. Okay. Before. This um, all worked when we. This all worked when we started in March. You know, when we first started live streaming before Zoom. Right. So it worked over Zoom. But today, the only people we could hear were the ones that were Zooming. Right. Yeah, but even then, we lost all of that. Right yeah. after the anniversary prayer, it went dark, and it went um, soundless. And Yes. I, I think it was a technical error on our part. Well, I know it's a lot more complicated it's, now, I Tony. Do, right. Yeah. And um, you're, it, didn't, you're, it didn't help that we also lost the internet during communion. Oh, no. That's what oh, happened. That we'll just throw that into the mix. You know? Right. Really. <laughs> you know what, Tony? I think you need to give us a sermon. We missed a sermon yeah. today. So. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Tony, Tony, uh, you're doing a magnificent job. Uh, we're not complaining. We're just uh, stating that that's what we couldn't <clears throat> hear. Well, and we I'll know check that with you're Lois working. and see who she can use. Oh, well. I don't know. I'm complaining. <laughs> well, oh, no. Yeah. Tony's worked yep. his little butt right, off. I know he has. I'm just joking. We want... We want you to know, Tony, how much we totally appreciate we everything do. you're doing. We're right. just, you know, you're a, God bless you, you are a saint for sure. Well, don't go that far. Oh, no, <laughs> right. I, I no, no, because I wouldn't even begin to know any of this. So I admire him. I, I, I appreciate Tony so much, but it, it's, I know it's frustrating for him as well as us. Sure. But we just want you to know the points that are what we're experiencing so it can get fixed You're right exactly we were just trying to say what you know yeah what didn't. I, I think that what happened is we had the audio system muted but i was trying to read people's lips and it looked like people were reading <laughs> long so i thought they were in sync with what was going on i didn't realize that we weren't mm. getting out how do you read <laughs> lips when we're wearing masks <laughs> Well, that's the nice thing about all of you being at home is right. none of you have masks on. Yeah. See how good Tony is? He can read lips through masks. <laughs> really? <laughs> Superman. Colors, 
the the, you should have seen the has. mask Chris had on this morning. His voice was so distorted. He switched it in the middle of the service. Really? Mm -hmm. oh, what did he have on? A cloth mask? Instead it was of an N95 <coughs> mask. He had a what? An N95. Oh, God, yeah. No, you can't even breathe through those things. They're so thick. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm nope. sorry. Maybe we'll do better next week. Well, yes, hey, you will. Trial and error. It'll get better, Tony. Don't worry. Yeah. You're doing great. Yeah. Right. Right. This is what it is. You just have to keep yeah. trying and trying and we'll figure it out. Right. I mean, this is only the second time, right? Yep. Good grief. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't here last week and Karen wasn't here this week. So we're starting off on the right foot. Well, then next week ought to be awesome. All right. right. <laughs> Thanks, right. Tony. Right. Bye, right. Everybody. Bye, Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Are we all still on? Boy, the picture is so clear. I, I know it is. It's beautiful. It's so nice to oh, see the church. It was so lovely at the altar. It was just lovely. No, okay. Oh,